But, you know, I'm glad that the story, of course, didn't end there. You know, I was ready to leave the door as soon as the service was over with. Now, you know how it is when you first come to MCC. You, you kind of get the whole God thing can kind of be better, but you don't know what to do with the people. Now, let me tell you, not everyone at every MCC looks like you. And Paducah had quite a few characters. <laughs> and so by the end of the service, I was ready to get out the door because I was not going to stand around and talk to any of them, right? And so as I was walking out the door, the pastor of the church came running up to me, and she goes, oh, my gosh, Justin, we're so glad that you were here. Apparently she'd known me from the, from the TV show. And she said, we're so glad you're here, and you know what? We've got you in our program to sing next week. Okay, well, honey, I don't do that anymore, but thank you so much for the offer. Well, like I said, we got you in the program to sing next week, and um, our sound check is going to be at 10 in the morning. Now, I do not know if you have seen a Paducah, Kentucky lesbian preacher, <laughs> but when you are that young of a gay boy, you just shake your head and say yes. So needless to say, I came back the next Sunday with a song. And one by one, God started to give me back things that I never thought I would ever have before, again, at all. And that was just a family, again. And it wasn't, a, you know, blood family, but it was an extended family of people all over this country. You know, I never thought I would ever be able to sing again, would ever be able to be of any, you know, inspiration to anyone. And you know what? I'm so grateful for where I've come. That's why I try to tell everyone with this tour that, you know, your stories are what will change the world. Your stories are what will help someone else. You have to look at yourself and say, you know what? You're not here and I'm up here. I'm here and you're here. And when we can all get on the same level and relate to each other, then that's when we'll start seeing lives changed. And you know, for me, people ask today, well, how is, the, how is the story these days? Well, my mother and I are on speaking terms. In the last year, it's gotten better. Still not where it should be, but it's getting there. Now, my father will never, ever, 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 ever be okay with me. In fact, one time when I came to town, he, uh, you know, you see people you haven't seen in a while and you get two reactions. It's either they run up to you and go, oh my gosh, it's so good to see you. Or they run this way and turn their head like they never saw you. Well, people would stand there with their mouths open. How did, what, what is that kind of response is that? So finally, I saw a girl I went to school with, and I said, why are you standing there like that? And she goes, well, I just can't believe you're here. And I said, well, what's going on? She said, well, your dad is the music director at our church. And I said, feel sorry for you. And she's like, yeah. And the other Sunday, he got up and talking about his family, and you know, he told the congregation that he had one son. Thinking, well, last time I checked, he had two. She said, well, you know, after it was over with, her mother had gone up to my father and said, you know, I know that Justin and Jenna went to school together. Whatever happened to Justin? My father looked her point blank in the eye, and I guess this was his way of, you know, letting her know that I was gay, making her feel sorry for him, and at the same time associating the only thing that he could associate with being gay all in the same foul swoop. And he said, oh, hadn't you heard? He died of AIDS. And so people had thought I had died. Now, I came real close that Sunday to going, showing up at his church. And when they asked for prayers and praises, I wanted to stand up and go, he arose. <laughs> it would have been a different kind of Easter, right? But, you know, it's important that we share our stories. It's important that we remember where we've come from because we have survived for a reason. We have come through it for a reason. And not only is it important to share our stories, but it's also important to share the story of Christ, the story of God with everyone, so that they know that even when they feel alone, there's someone there who wants to be with them as well. She never passed a lonely soul she failed to greet The gardener pulling weeds, the beggar on the street The ones who seemed invisible, the addicts gone astray I never really noticed them until she stopped to pray 
But when I asked her why she seemed to always care She could only answer I've been there I beg to die in pain no one could share I felt the wounds, I kept the scars I can meet them where they are I can feel their pain Cause I have been there So many times I see the tears fill wounded eyes Someone has thrown them out The world has told them lies They feel they are invisible Their hearts have grown so hard Afraid God has abandoned them Because of who they are Jesus, how can you reach through such despair? But then I hear you answer. I've been there. I've been there. I beg to die in pain no one could share. I took the scars I can meet them where they are I can feel their pain Cause I have been there And it took the cross It took the shame It took my blood So you would know I felt your pain I've been there, I've been there I beg to die in pain no one could share I felt the wounds, I took the scars I can meet you where you are I can heal your pain Cause I've been there I says don't leave before you say one simple prayer You can come from death to life Cause I've been there